So today we're going to look at hot water systems, mainly direct and indirect hot water systems. So at the end of this part of the session, I want you all to be able to describe the difference between direct and indirect hot water systems, including some of the key pros and cons of each type. <clears throat> Visually, identify direct and indirect hot water systems from diagrams and describe the reason why we should avoid long dead legs um, and also include some of the methods we could use to overcome the issues associated with dead legs um, in the instance that we have to use them. I've split this into two parts, uh, part one and part two. Part one is going to mainly look at direct and so part two is going to look at indirect and localised and centralised systems. So hot water can be categorised in, in lots of different ways by the way that water is heated. It can be heated either directly or indirectly, which we're going to talk about what that means now. Whether the water is, is stored or heated instantaneously, and there's benefits and, and drawbacks to, to both uh, systems. Whether the system feeds a single appliance or a single point appliance or multiple appliances, which would be a multi-point appliance. Um, now this is also described as centralised hot water systems or localised hot water systems and we're going to talk about what that means a bit later on as well. So firstly we're going to look at direct and indirect and right at the start we're going to look at direct and we've already sort of touched on, on the difference between direct and indirect in the, in the cold water module and we talked about that in the hot water module it actually means something different um, than, to, uh, than it does in cold water. So direct systems. Direct systems heat the water directly and, and by that we mean that the actual heat source is in direct contact with the water, the hot water which comes out of our taps. The, the prime example, probably the best example is, is the example shown on the right here. Um, we've got a cylinder here with an immersion heater in it. The immersion heater is the heat source, it heats up and it heats the water in the cylinder. And the water in the cylinder is the water that comes out of our taps. Though there are other methods of other direct hot water systems which we're going to talk about uh, now. I mean, a combi boiler, for example, would be a, a direct heat source because the, the boiler uh, heats the water that comes out of our taps directly. And another, uh, there's another sort of less common um, example that we're going to look at now. Um, which, yeah, we're going to look at it now. Okay, this is a direct cylinder. Um, and in this direct cylinder, there is no heat exchanger. Normally in cylinders, in almost all cylinders that, you, that you're going to come across, there'll be a heat exchanger inside there. But inside a direct cylinder, there's no heat exchanger. So th this water circulates to and from the boiler, Normally by convection, it's normally sort of um, a, set, a solid fuel heater heating the like a back boiler or something at the back of a, a coal fire um, or, or a wood burner that, that sort of heats this water. It will sort of rise up through the primary flow, which is the pipe uh, to the, the cylinder and the primary return the pipe back from the cylinder. And um, there's, let's like say there's no heat exchanger in, in there. And normally it will sort of rise and fall um, through convection, using convection only, which is um, essentially it uses the difference in density between hot water and cold water, um, with the hot water rising up up here and the cold the colder water falling back through here. Um, and some people call it gravity circulation. The scientific term is convection for for this sort of movement of, of fluid. Okay, and the minimum sized flow and return uh, for any primaries using gravity circulation is 28 mil. And the same is true if, if it's a solid fuel um, appliance that's heating the water. Again, the flow and return should be a minimum of 28 mil. For all other primaries to the cylinder, it's going to be 22 if it's heated by gas, if it's heated by um, by oil, uh, as long and, and it's pumped, then the primaries will be 22 mil. But if it's solid fuel or if it's if it's traveling down by gravity or by convection, then the, these um, some pipes should be at least 28 mil of primary flow in return. Okay, so this is just what we've talked about here. So the heat source could well be coal or wood, which would be classed as solid fuel, which is an uncontrolled heat source. 
Um, so you need to uh, make sure that you use the correct size pipe but and there's also other measures that you need to put in place to make sure that the water doesn't overheat. Uh, you probably have like a heat leak radiator fitted on the um, on the system with a, with a sort of motorized valve to shut off the the flow to the to the cylinder if it reaches its set temperature, which would normally be between 60 and 65 degrees C, uh, and then that, that would divert the the hot water to a heat leak radiator, which would essentially just just release the extra heat from the uncontrolled um, heat source essentially it's going into the, the water so yeah a uh, big drawback with this system type is that the boiler heat exchanger would scale up in hard water areas uh, you can't see it here this video is sort of hiding it um, but the boiler is connected to the cylinder there's no heat exchanger in there so if, if this is, good, is in a hard water area that means that lime scale is going to build up on the heat exchanger in the boiler and uh, it will start to make it less efficient and eventually sort of clog it up completely. Okay. So yeah, it's a, but a positive of this system is that there's a store of water. You can see up here if it's an open vented system and um, if, the, if the main fails. I'm going to look briefly at immersion heaters. Okay, um, immersion heaters are, are, are quite a good way of heating the water. Um, they're cheap to install. They're fairly expensive to run though. Okay, and if it's an open vented system, the big positive is it's got a store of it's got store of water there. Um, should the main fail, heats up fairly quickly. It's got a store of water. Should the main fail. And, but the, the drawback is it can be an expensive way to heat the water. So this is a direct system of hot water because the immersion is the heat source and it's directly in contact with the, with the hot water in the cylinder. Another direct system of hot water is the combi boiler. Uh, this one just here is, is, a, is an example of a, a diagram of a, of a system. You see you've got your cold supply going in there. Um, it's actually this is actually a sealed system. We're going to talk about the difference between open vented and sealed systems in the next section. So we've got the cold supply coming in here, high pressure cold water, and with high pressure hot water coming out here. It's called the combination boiler because it heats the hot water and it also heats the, the heat water for the heating system, the primary water, all all in, in one in one unit. And generally speaking, generally speaking, the water which is in the heating side and, and also sort of that would go through a coil and in, in a indirect cylinder which we're going to talk about briefly um would be classed as being on the primary side so everything on the on this heating side is the primary side everything on the hot water side is is the secondary side okay so there's lots of different types of uh, combi boilers uh, you can get electric combi boilers you can get oil fired combi boilers, but the most most commonly we're going to get gas combi boilers. Okay, and let's like say it's a direct heat source, um, so it's considered a direct direct hot water system. We've got cold going in, being heated by the heat source, coming back out. So combi boilers heats the heat the water instantaneously. Okay, it means it heats it straight away. There's no requirement to store the hot water, which actually means that they are a little bit more efficient than, than sort of the systems that store the water. Get a little bit more uh, value for money, essentially. It also reduces the risk of Legionella because there's no stored hot water. Uh, water needs to be stored um, and heated to at least 60 degrees to, to, to minimise the risk of Legionella. Um, and if you obviously keep water stored at a high temperature, there's it's going to lose lose some of that heat, which may, means it's sort of not going to be as efficient as a combi boiler, which just heats the water as and when you need it. Um, they are fed from the supply pipe, so it's, you get high pressure water going in and high pressure water going out. But the, the big drawback is really. Um, that they, they can only heat so much water at a time, which means that the, if you open up more than one outlet, the flow rate will drop off significantly. 
and even if you even if you're just trying to fill up a bath with from a combi boiler the flow is is really quite slow um so there's there's sort of positives to combi boilers but there's also drawbacks to combi boilers as well so that's the end of part one